So in this video, we're going to look at a range of different coping strategies, but they're generally regarded and, and broken down into two categories, approach versus avoidance coping. And most psychologists would agree, or well, the literature, the studies point towards approach coping being the better strategy. So we're going to look at why approach coping is better than avoidance coping. First of all, we need to know well, what is coping. Coping, technical definition. A person's efforts to manage demands that are appraised as taxing or exceeding resources. Now remember, stress occurs when the demands exceed the resources you have available. So you feel financially stressed when the demands, your bills to pay, exceed your resources, the money that you have. You might feel academic stress when the demands, the amount of work you have to do, your homework assignments, tests, are exceeding the resources you have, the time, the effort, the energy you have to prepare for those things. Even the, you know, your cognitive capabilities or your academic abilities to, to achieve in those. So coping is, well, how do we manage those situations when demands exceed resources? So how do we try to deal with our stress? So if, just to recall, so in a previous video, I've explained this study on IB students back in 2008. So they grouped IB and AP students together and they compared them with other students in high schools. And they looked at their stress levels and their coping styles. Well, they found IB and AP students were more stressed. IB, IB and AP students watching this will probably not be surprised by that. Um, they found that in IB students, higher stress correlated with poorer mental health. Lower life satisfaction was one of the measures they used for that. But IB students with positive appraisals and good family communication had higher life satisfaction. A positive appraisal, appraisal is how we think of a stressor, right? Do we um, think of it as a threat or as a challenge? What are the ways we're thinking about the, uh, about the things that are stressing us out? That's an appraisal, right? And motivation negatively correlated with school burnout, meaning if you were highly motivated to do well, you had lower rates of school burnout. Okay. Now, remember, this is correlation, not causation, so it could go the other way. Now, so approach avoidance coping. So approach means actively dealing with the stressor. Avoidance means putting all your efforts to get away from the stressor. So you could be ignoring it, denying it, withdrawing from it completely. So approach coping generally is the more effective strategy and it's correlated with fewer health issues. Uh, we'll look at some examples of particular approach and avoidance coping strategies uh, in a moment. And in fact, in this study, they broke it down for us and they looked at a different range. So the, those same researchers, Sododo, 10 years later, did another study about coping in IB and AP students. So over 2,000 students in US schools, IB and AP, and they looked at their stresses, how they cope with it, their GPA exam scores, and mental health. And here we have a range of different coping strategies they measured in the study. Approach coping, so time management, right? Uh, if you've got a lot of stresses, you've got a lot of work on right now, you've got to figure out a strategy to manage your time. Cognitive reappraisal, so how are they uh, appraising, thinking about the stress, and then how do they rethink about it? The use of family support, seeking ad academic support, so if you're looking for a tutor or asking your teachers for more help, spirituality and relaxation. Okay, now avoidance coping, skipping school, sleeping, i.e. having a nap, right? You get home from school, instead of doing your work, you might take a nap, or you, and by nap, right, maybe two or three hours, not doing so much school work, um, dropping classes or trying to reduce academic demands in some way, and uh, substance abuse, right, substance abuse, this is a, a common avoidance coping. So we can see approach means taking strategies to actively try to deal with the stressor, and avoidance means trying to get away from it. Now, approach coping correlated with higher life satisfaction, lower psychopathology, mean, and in this case, that means symptoms of distress. Distress is like, it kind of sounds similar to chronic stress. Um, less burnout and avoidance coping correlated with lower GPA, lower AP and IB exam scores, psych and positively correlated with psychopathology. So from this IB and AP psychology students, we would hopefully take away from this that you want to be using more approach coping strategies. Now, here are some reasons why approach coping could be beneficial. So stress occurs when demand exceeds resources, right? So we need to get that in our mind. So what approach coping can do is it provides you access to more resources. Avoidance coping is trying to reduce the demands, right? Trying to, and, if, and, and it's just not a, an effective strategy because, well, think about it. If you're trying to do IB and, and you're trying to achieve well or you're doing a course, a study, and you've got lots of things stressing you out, they're stressing you out because they're important to you, because you want to be successful in them to move forward. So if you try to reduce those demands, drop courses, drop classes, um, maybe even drop out of school altogether, well, in the long term, 
that's not going to be good for your mental health. It's not going to be good for um, for your future either, right? And so you instead of trying to reduce the demands, you want to get more resources. That's key. All right, so approach coping can also increase one's sense of control over stresses. So things are most stressful when we feel like we can't control them, when there's a lack of predict- predictability and a lack of control. So if you can use an approach coping strategy, you can get a greater sense of control. All right, um, this is kind of, I really like this um, short video and I'll try to remember to link it uh, in the description. I love how this shows small choices can add up to big changes when it comes to coping with stress and life in general. It's a really good three minute animation. Um, and I like. I would like to think that I walk the walk, not just talk the talk on this one. I have a lot of work to do. I do a lot of different things. I, I'm a full-time teacher and I have this YouTube and I, um, I also teach online and I run a blog and it's, there's a lot, and I have three kids and um, lots of other things going on. And it's, I I can definitely relate to this, that approach coping is better. And so this is, it's currently 4.20 a.m. while I'm recording this because I went to bed at 9 a.m. and I'm trying to eat well and I try to exercise and I try to do a lot of daily things and I've tried to make a lot of sacrifices to give myself more energy to cope with the work and the demands that I have to do to keep on top of things. And ironically, I've found the harder I work, the less stressed I am. But that means that I have to make certain uh, sacrifices. So I can't watch TV during the week. I have to be very careful with what I eat and what I drink uh, so I can wake up at 4 a.m. after eight hours sleep and feel better. Anyway, so, and I just would um, urge you to um, look at stresses as the same way as they're not things to be avoided, they're challenges to be dealt with. And sometimes, yes, if you want to be successful, it requires personal sacrifice, which is why not everyone will end up being successful. And this is why I really like this great little choice, short animated movie, because it just shows the little sacrifices you can make every day to try to keep on top of your stresses are going to mount up to big changes. So that's it, approach coping versus avoidance coping. It'd be one of the biggest lessons I would hope people would get from studying stress and resilience and coping is that Try to adapt as many approach coping strategies as you can. So after this, I hope you can explain how and why approach coping is better than avoidance coping, and you'd be able to use that Soldo et al. study on IB and AP students to help you. Now, where this fits in, this is just generally quite interesting, I think, but if you're studying for the health psychology option in IB psychology, we could use this for a um, uh, risk and protective factors. So a risk factor would be the avoidance coping and the protective factor could be the approach coping. Explanations of health problems. So we had um, psychopathology there and and psychological distress. So high levels of stress. You could use this for uh, the explanation of health problems. So if you're using a avoidance coping strategy, that could uh, explain that. So I think it can work for both of those topics. All right. Now, approach coping, avoidance coping are two general ways that these things are grouped together, but also they're grouped together by emotion versus problem-focused coping. Uh, and so these are two other general categories that have a lot of overlap with approach and avoidance. And we'll talk about these in the next lesson, and we'll look at what they are and why the one of them is better than the other. All right. Thanks for listening. This is the first video I've recorded in my new office, my new quote-unquote studio. So if the reverb is a little bad and the sound quality is not great, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I need to do the sounding in the room. Anyway, right. Uh, I hope that was helpful.